I know someone is uh, soloing, I think, FE3 with, like, I think Math is, or maybe they already did it. I think Jimmy Blaze is doing that. Are you sure about that? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am back again, and once again, my tactical genius has been neglected. So... I had to come out and make the Shadow Dragon Hard 5 Mathis solo. Now the rules for this will be very similar to my FE3 solo. The second I get Mathis, he only does the combat forever, like if Marth gets attacked, I have to reset the map. But this is obviously Shadow Dragon Hard 5, nobody, nobody besides a trained wolf can take more than two hits and live. So obviously I'm allowed to use healing units like Lena. And I'm also going to use thieves like Julian to steal stuff but for Mathis, like stat boosters. But it's Lena is Mathis' sister and Julian is Mathis' brother-in-law, so it's like a family effort, so just look at it like that. But yeah, Mathis will be doing most of the actual everything else, right? And obviously I need Marth to seize. Rule 2, I do not have to worry about units that are automatically deployed, like the Wolf Guard or the Prison Gang. Like, I will just unequip their weapons, because I obviously can't undeploy them at the start of the map. And then for rule 3, I can deploy any unit I want for any reason I want, like to block forts for reinforcements, because... Like, in the chapter where you rescued the prison gang, obviously a bunch of bow units come from behind you, so it'd be hard for Mathis to block the front units and the back units, so I can just block reinforcements if I want to. That doesn't come into play too often, but it's something I can do. And for the sake of transparency, I did use some dubious means to get past the first three chapters of this game, because I didn't want to deal with the early hard five bosses, so I just wanted to get to the soloing as quickly as possible. But there will be no save states, no action replay codes, no nothing interfering with this run, except what's in the game. So, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. Vote for Mathis and choose your Legends Round 6, because that's when I'm posting this. And with all that being said, let's start the solo. So, obviously, the first step of a Mathis solo is to get Mathis. Oh, uh, this is actually a nice conversation. Mathis, in general, has, well, more characterization than pretty much any other Arcanea character besides, like, the main ones, like Seda, Camus, you know, Marth, you know, Minerva, like, the main group core people think when they think Arcanea. But Mathis has this conversation with Lena, another talk with Marth, he has a lot of supports in Mystery, like, even this conversation where he joins is a lot longer than the other ones, you know, compared to Daros where he says, hey, I don't want to be a pirate. You know, we actually get a lot of insight on Mathis's personality here, and I did a whole character analysis on him, so top right if you want to see that. But now that that's done, let's delve into the actual strategies of the run. Now, this first chapter and the first few chapters are pretty tricky since Mathis has very low bases and very low growths in Shadow Dragon, so I have to use some sneaky tricks to get around his weaknesses. At the beginning of the chapter, you may have noticed I forged an Iron Lance called the Mega and gave it some might and 10 crit. Now, I gave it some crit so I could rig critical hits, and rigging crits is the process of using a save point on the map, and if you don't get a crit, you reset, and this is very easy in Shadow Dragon since this game has save points. So I do it on these archers here, there are two come down, I need to at least kill one of them, so I rig crit there. And then after I'm done with the archers, there's the knight. Now I do another good use of the save points, and rig a level up, that I kept resetting until I got at least speed and defense, but as you can see I got a lot better one here on the attempt that actually went through. So those are some pretty good tricks you can use to make units in Shadow Dragon that aren't the best, uh, a little bit better. And then I have to lure down the two horsemen, which I can do one at a time, and then just surround them with my other units. And then, of course, there's the boss. Now, I bought a bunch of javelins in Chapter 1 to prepare for this, and I just threw javelins at him until Mathis was, like, level 18. Because these are hard five enemies. Again, they will destroy you, so Mathis being ahead of the curve here. He does have a 90% HP growth, so that helps his durability a lot. But Mathis being ahead of the curve when it comes to the enemies will help this a lot, so I just grind it a lot. And after that... I moved on to the next chapter. At the start of this chapter, I forge a rider's bane because for those who don't know, a lot of the enemies in Shadow Dragon are on horses. So it's very useful to build this, like on this map for example, three cavaliers right from the start will just charge down at you. And once I make this forge, Mathis is able to just one shot all of them and because I grinded him last map, he lives. Now the next part of this map is very tricky. Since I'm only using one unit, I obviously can't just charge in all at once because there are reinforcements on this map that start uh, on like turn 7 I think. So I have to wait at this fort so Mathis can automatically heal as he deals with wave after wave. Luckily this fort does supply you know good healing, good evasion like the archers only have like 50% hit 
about that. The flyers with javelins aren't that accurate. But I did have to reset this countless times because for the RNG to go exactly right, uh, it was a hassle. You know, I was thinking of, at this point in the run, just like, oh, can I even beat Shadow Dragonheart 5 with Mathis? But eventually I did get the good RNG where everything just worked out. You know, I had to keep Martha and Lena stuck in a corner there so they weren't attacked. And then after that, I went up. By this point, everyone in the wolf card was dead because uh, they ain't Mathis, baby. And then I had to do a thing where I lured Boa around to separate him from the archer because if Marth talked to Boa while the archer was there, then the archer would attack Marth and then that's not a solo run. And then after I got all that figured out, I was able to get Boa, you know, and then just seize. This is probably the hardest chapter in the game, but at least it's all uphill from here, right? I took a much different approach to this map compared to the last map, because there are thieves trying to steal treasure, a lot of aggressive enemies, and two cavaliers, one with a silver lance, that I need to take care of. So I send Mathis guns blazing into enemy territory, and with his forged iron lance, the mega, he's able to one round knights and stuff like that. So I do that, I rush in, and then the Cavaliers are going for Marth, so I retreat, I pull back, I rig a crit, be I, I just can, I do it because I can to save the uses of my Rider's Bane, and there's a save point right there, and then after that's done, I warp Mathis up to deal with the Thieves, and then after that, there are pretty much only Archers left on the map, so I can just easily train up my Sword Rank, because I want Sea Swords before the next chapter. And after all that's done, I can just easily defeat the boss with the Silver Lance. I'm going to be honest with you, I just straight up warp skipped this chapter. There are a lot of reinforcements, some of which have Rider's Banes, so I just didn't really feel like playing this map, honestly. However, there are some things to note. I forged an Armor Slayer to deal with bosses like this one, and future bosses that may be armored. I switched Mathis to a Mimradon in case he couldn't double the boss, this class gives him extra speed. And I did get a Sephiroth Robe last chapter, so his bulk should be increased by 7 HP. And with that, I just warp to the finish. Kill the boss, and that's pretty much this map. Port Warren is a very, very easy map because very few enemies actually come at you, and the ones that do are mostly riders, which get torn apart by my Sheenly, the forged rider's bane. And after that's done, I go down to the arena to get some gold because I'm making so many forges in this run that having an extra bit of coin on hand could be nice for that and other supplies. And after that, I'm able to just go kill the boss since the enemies in their little hidey holes don't really care. Now, if the Wolfguard chapter wasn't the hardest chapter, the Pirate Dragon might be because I had to make the stupidest forge at the start of this chapter, a plus two might steel sword, because one of the pirates has two more HP than some of the other pirates for some reason, just because he has a devil axe, I guess. And with all the reinforcements, it was very, very hard to keep Marth and my other units secure while keeping Mathis healed. Luckily, in the Myrmidon class, the pirates weren't too accurate against him, so he was able to dodge tank a little bit, like 40%. Like, he could dodge a lot of hits, but not all of them, so sometimes he died and I had to reset. But eventually, taking an aggressive approach and leaving Marth on top, or kinda above Mathis, but not completely on top of the map, while having Mathis charge down to deal with the reinforcements head-on seemed to work. And after all the reinforcements were cleared out, all I had to do was take out the boss. But hey, if this chapter has showed you anything, don't let anyone tell you Mathis can't dodge tank. This chapter was very time sensitive, because after a couple turns, reinforcements come from the top, and there's no way Mathis could hold them all off while fending off Draco Knights from the other side. And also, it has the first Master Seal. So, I devised a plan. I wouldn't fight the Cavaliers turn one, because I needed to lure them up towards me, because then the Flyers would go right instead of down, which they would have gone down if I charged right towards the Cavaliers on turn one, so that's a bit of AI manipulation. And then after Mathis dealt with the Cavaliers, so Marth and Lena were safe, I warped Mathis to go deal with the hero to get the first Master Seal, and this Master Seal was very important because it gave Mathis one speed to bump him up to 12 when the boss had eight speed, so now Mathis could double him because he had four or more speed. And I have the Armor Slayer. So then I ran over to the boss, destroyed him, then warped up Marth, and that's this chapter. It was pretty tricky, but once I figured out how I wanted the AI to act, I could execute my plan with little to no room for error. This chapter is pretty much just a walk in the park. I did get speed wings from the boss of the last chapter, which bumps Mathis up to 14 speed, and pretty much most of the enemies are either calves, which I one-shot and double at this point, or mercenaries, which I have a weapon triangle against, thus getting rid of their A rank advantage. So I just go, clear out the mercenaries, and grind for 11 levels in the arena. Now the arena actually does have an interesting trick in Shadow Dragon. The cheapest tier possible, which I think before promotion is around 800 gold, and after promotion is like 1,100, where you only fight mages. And 
Paladin is one of the only classes in this game with an actual good resistance set of 6, so I just can keep rejecting unfavorable matchups and just keep fighting mages. So if you're ever playing Shadow Dragon and want to get a Paladin up to snuff, that's a pretty good way. But I only grind for 11 levels because the other 9 levels are level ups I could rig to guarantee good stats like speed and defense later. After I'm done in the arena, I pretty much just go up and kill all the calves, dragons, and a Jake. Sorry Jake, but I didn't deploy C to this map. And after that, the boss of this map is just a generic calf, so it's really no problem. And on to the next one. This chapter really shows the importance of level rigging, as I do it twice this chapter to get Mathis up to 18 speed which allows him to pretty much double everything in the mid-game, which is going to be the next long stretch of the game. So what I do here, as you can see on this mage, I just keep resetting until I get this good level up, and then I keep going. These enemies are no problem since Mathis is like a level 11 promoted unit, and most of the enemies on this map are just scrubs. So I just keep going, and then I get to this other boss here. Well, yeah, he, there are actually two bosses on this map, and then I just keep resetting against his goonies until I get another good level up, and as you see, bumps me up to 18 speed and I was able to do this because there are two save points on the map that I was conveniently able to access before Mathis was about to get a level up and after that we do actually get the boots that allow Mathis to get up to 12 movements so that'll make my life much much easier in case I ever need him to retreat or go forth with swift speed and with that on to the next chapter believe it or not I think this being a solo run actually makes this map easier because you can just send one unit forth to deal with all the ballista rather than all of your weak units being shot at all the time like most people who play this game just send general wolf in here to deal with it but it being a 12 move paladin that can actually double things makes it a bit easier there's nothing really too much of note here but I do get a second rider's bane that I'm going to forge soon because my original rider's bane is running out of uses and I just clear out all the ballista so Marth can safely get to the throne without being attacked and yeah, there's really not much to note on this map. This chapter was another time-sensitive one because eventually Pegasus reinforcements would come and try to get Marth and Julian, so I had Mathis try to quickly clear out the area around the bridge and then go down in the right hallway because this map does have the silver card, so getting the treasure is quite important. And yeah, so Julian goes to get the treasure while Mathis is clearing the way, and eventually we do get Paula and Catcher, and I was actually unsure if we could recruit them because Minerva didn't fare well against my plan for this run but it turns out you can still recruit them and they do have special dialogue claiming that Minerva is dead even though Mathis didn't fight her directly so I guess she gets executed that's some extra story for you you know if she fails to get Marth so that's interesting but they do join us and luckily one of them has a dragon pike which I will forge later because the end game of this game has quite a few dragon related problems but yeah as you can see here the Pegasus the Pegasi actually uh, do eventually almost catch up to Julian, but luckily uh, one turn later they would have got him, but Marth was able to seize in time, and on to the next one. In this chapter, I do make full use of the Draco Knight class. I did use it last chapter, but it wasn't entirely necessary, but in this chapter it's really convenient because of all the sand that would have slowed him down if he was a paladin. And I do use the barrier staff a bit because there are mostly mages on this map, and in Shadow Dragon they do peck quite a punch, and I also have him carry around Volunaries for the same reason, just so he can heal himself when he does occasionally get hit by a mage, but mostly I'm just flying around using the javelin. Garneth is here, but he doesn't really matter because he disappears after a while. We do get a strength drop, and, which I don't need anymore since Mathis has capped strength, and a resistance booster, which is helpful. But yeah, this is where you start to notice that the enemies in Shadow Dragon don't really scale well. I'll delve more into that next chapter, but yeah, this chapter is pretty much just Draco Javelin the movie. In this chapter, I forge another Rider's Bane because my other one was running out, so I do that. And to actually start the map, I defeat all three of the Dracos that are immediately coming at me. And it's funny because I also kind of immediately, since Mantis is a Draco Knight, he can just fly towards the boss and prevent just all the reinforcements just by smacking him upside the head. So I do that and that's pretty funny. And yeah, I was talking about how last chapter in the desert chapter that enemies kind of fall off at this point. You can get around like three Master Seals at this point in the game and all the enemies, well most of them are still just scrubs and the ones that aren't, like that general that, this one general that's on that map just gets killed by a forged hammer. So a lot of the enemies in this game just kind of crumble by this point if you've been raising your army right. And even like most people use General Wolf and can just tank all these guys. And that doesn't really change around to endgame where you're fighting a bunch of dragons that even Wolf can't hold off forever. So yeah, this is the point where it kind of stops becoming the Mathis solo and the Mathis steamroll. So buckle in your seatbelts because the carnage is only getting started. With that being said, the boss did drop a Draco shield, which boosts his defense even further, and there's really not much else to say 
Oh, but I did buy some stuff with the silver card, so that's why I got that last chapter. And with that being said, on to the next map. I know I just said last chapter that the enemies in this game don't scale well, but this chapter actually decides to drop capped speed fire dragons on you, so I forge a dragon pike called the Mathis for Choose Your Legends. You know, go vote right now if you're watching this in case you forgot. I see you, I know where you live. Anyway, uh, so I do that to just one shot the dragons, and other than that, it's more basic scrub enemies. I do get all the treasure, more stat boosters for Lord Mathis and all that. Uh, I reclass to a paladin because there's a sniper with the killer ball on this map, and it's not really worth the hassle of being a Draco Rider when you can't really abuse flying in the first place. And in the main room, I have Mathis charge in so he can get rid of all the swarm guys first so Marth can go. And I try to use the secret shop here because I thought for some reason that this store sold physics staves. I think I was thinking of the Fire Emblem 3 secret shop, but that's not a thing in this game, so I just didn't buy anything. And yeah, the boss isn't too hard with my forged pike. And that's really all there is to say about this map. This map is a complete joke. It's just a wide open space that you can fly over to go attack the boss and then warp Marth over. I could have waited to get the Mercurius from Est, but honestly, I didn't really care. I wasn't really planning on many Swordmaster Mathis hijinks, and I'm gonna get the Gradivus in two chapters anyway, which is just better. So, this is essentially a nothing map. Compared to last map, this map is actually very important as it contains two items, the Star Sphere and Light Sphere, which lets me use weapons infinitely and allows me to ignore terrain bonuses. So yeah, I definitely want to get those. Combat-wise though, this map is essentially uh, pretty easy since most of the enemies use swords and I have lance advantage and that means they lose their A rank weapon bonuses. So Mathis pretty much just cruises through all of them, grabs the spheres, I have Julian grab all the treasure because there is some good stuff. And then I destroy Tiki because I did not get Bantu, because I warped past the map where you get Bantu if you remember correctly, so no Tiki for us. This map is actually kind of tricky because of the sheer amount of reinforcements it has, so I bring a lot more units than just Mathis and Lena to plug up the fort, because the last thing I need is Marth to get sniped by some dude coming from a fort while Mathis is off fighting Camus. So I do that, I clear out the main area, I do get the hammer in, which allows me to fix some items, it's not, it doesn't matter too much, for weapons, because Mathis has the Star Sphere now, or Light Sphere, whichever one it is, which lets him just use weapons forever. And yeah, but the Hammer will be good for the warp stuff, which I am going to use a lot in the and near the end of this run anyway. So yeah, I do all that. I do eventually go and fight Camus. Uh Camus is a fabled general, but he is no match for Mathis at this rate. He doesn't die in one hit to my Forged Rider's Bane, so I kinda have to lure him around a little bit with some javelins, but eventually I do defeat him. I take the Gratifus as my own, uh, you know, kill the rest of the enemies. I don't need the EXP, I'm just testing out my new Gratifus sphere combo. And yeah, with that, let's move on to Macedon, the homeland of Mathis. And here we are at last, Macedon, the homeland of Mathis. However, this time Mathis has the Gratifus and he isn't going down without a fight. I can just send him straight through the middle with the Gratifus, which is a 1-2 range item that I have infinite uses of and has a very high might rating. So I can just go up and destroy the entire army in pretty much one turn. And I also warp another unit to the secret shop so I can get some speed wings and other stuff Mathis doesn't have yet so he can cap speed. And with that, let's go to the home of the man that started this all by sending Mathis to the front lines to die, Michalis. Now it's time to fight Michalis. The map itself is pretty much the same as the last map in terms of my strategy. Mathis plus Gradivus plus infinite uses equals a bad time for the enemy. I can just plow straight through them pretty much with no effort at all. And even if I do get damaged, the Gradivus is also an elixir, so I can heal all my HP, even if I do get damaged. So now let's see what fate befalls the man who thought Mathis was so weak that he was just cannon fodder. Unfortunately, there are still more villains to defeat, so why don't we go win against Garneth and Medius to finish this once and for all. Unfortunately, Mathis cannot win against Garneth, so as soon as I grab the treasure, I freaking bail! 
At the beginning of this chapter, I have to forge a new Dragon's Bane because the old one I have isn't very good against this boss, so I forge a new one, and I have another unit go down to grab the stat boosters, the remaining stat boosters from the secret shop, like the combat manuals, which I will need for my endgame strategy, you'll see. And I have Julian grab the Alm Staff because that's another thing I'll need for my endgame strategy. And I just skipped past 24x since it's mainly just a chapter for training scrubs, which I don't need at this point. Now to finish this solo runoff, there is only one thing I could think to do. I had to use Mathis in his most epic class imaginable and make the most epic forge imaginable. So I sold almost everything that I did not need to pour all my possible funds into making the most powerful forge I have made in this entire run. The funny. And then I used all my combat manuals on Mage Mathis so he could actually use the weapon. And now, the fight was on. The first thing I had to do was warp Mathis up to fight Medius. I had to rig a crit, and of course I did this by resetting the game until I got a crit. However, another crucial part of the plan was dying, which you see here, Mathis actually died. Don't worry though, this is all part of the plan to grant him another action. I can have Elise use the Alm Staff to bring Mathis back to life, and now let's watch what happens when Mathis' sister Lena warps him into the boss room. And just like that, the world has once again been saved by the one, the only, Mathis Fire Emblem. Mathis is definitely one of my favorite characters in this game, so thank you for indulging me for 22 minutes to watch me beat the entire game with just him. And hey, if you liked it, go vote for Mathis and choose your legends right now. It's happening as I'm posting this. And like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching my little video about Mathis. If you want an in-depth character analysis on him, just wait until the end. I'm going to have the suggested videos on the subscribe scene be all the Mathis-related ones. There are the, there's also the FE3 solo. None of this was scripted since I felt like it would be more genuine if I just explained things how I felt rather than writing them down. So if you noticed a few more hums and hums than my normal video, then sorry about that. And now, why don't we read the only ending that matters. Mathis left the army in favor of a dull and predictable life in Macedon. To him, bliss. 793 battles, 359 wins.